All right, it's great to see you. Let's knock this out. Go ahead and count us in. One, two, three, four. Welcome to Jive Side Music Instruction. This is Fretting Around for Fun with Forrest. I'm Forrest. This is the fretboard. We're here to talk about guitar. Help you get a little further along. I want to say rest in peace to Malcolm Young. You know that man was. Great to see you. Welcome back. We are here to talk about the mind. mind. Now it's a little late in my game tonight, so uh, even though my neighbors love hearing me get better, they probably don't want to hear me getting better for too much longer on a Sunday evening. And that's all good. They're gonna let us do our thing because they're hearing me sound better. And I'm here to help you, help your neighbors, hear you get better. So dig it, we're gonna talk about a couple things for your mind, some needs to knows that are a lot of fun to help your ideas and your rock and roll grow. So dig it. Power chords. I'm sure you've seen it, you've definitely heard it. We may have even mentioned it once or twice before, and I'm sure it will not be the last time. But it consists of a root, a fifth, and then oftentimes an octave. I'm just messing around with that. But it's a root, a fifth, and an octave. Or it's just a root and a fifth. Five chord. Now, how do you know which chord you're playing? Well, your index finger is playing the roots. This is A, thus it's an A five chord or an A power chord. Move it down a whole step. G, G power chord. Move it up a fourth by moving it next door. C is in the root, C power chord. C sharp, D. D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A. And then we also have these shapes from the other strings. From the octave, this is our root, it's a G. Okay, so this is a G5. Here's our root, here's our fifth. And then, if we want to throw in our octave, here's our octave. Shape changes a little bit because of the B string. And then same thing from the G string. So our five chords. If A is our root, our fifth is right here, an E. And then let's put the octave in. A5 chord. Drop it down a whole step, we get G. Down a half step. F sharp, F, E, and then you've got a thousand songs like you've heard that before. I don't even want to go into the songs. Write your own songs with it. Same thing up on the A string. We have D is our root of the fifth fret. Fifth root. Fifth octave, root fifth octave. Move it down a whole step to C. C power chord. C sharp. F E F sharp G G sharp A. Down to A. From the D string, shapes are the same except the octave is one fret closer to your other hand. One fret up the neck. So right here, G is in our root, then there's our D, and then there's our G again. Works the same way. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D. You'll notice that's part of our D shape right there, because we're making D form power chords. And then we can do them from the G string as well. And it just looks nice and like that. So here's a C, G, 
and C again. C sharp, D, C again, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, and you'll notice, oh, that looks like a G chord. So, what do we want to know about power chords beyond that? And I'm sorry I'm blowing through this fast, but keep up, man. This is why you play guitar, to power chord it up. I know you can keep up. So why do you do this? Well, first of all, uh, they're, not new, they're neither major nor minor, so you can get away with... Whatever, without having to change your chord shape and without having to change the quality of the chords. So if you were to stick to, to a uh, strict tonal law, if you, if you must, that progression I just played of A, C sharp, D, and E, in numbers that would be one, three, four, five, it, it's an A major, let's say it's an A major, we have A major, C sharp minor, D major, and then E7. But that kind of takes away a little bit of the rocky, rocky rolliness of it. So anyway, uh, Here's just some quick ways to practice your power chords, okay? And then we're gonna talk about some double stops and, uh, and what it means to you and to me and to everybody. So, one way to do your power chords is just go up half steps. Start on E. Set up a groove or a drum machine or have a drummer. You'll notice TNT, this is how TNT ends. And let's even tie in exactly the ending of TNT. So on and so forth. So what that is, is he's just changing keys with every single chord, going through a root position pentatonic. Bending the minor seventh up to the root. So here's a way to practice this. And this is probably what they practiced, Malcolm and Angus, and why they thought to end the song like that, and just kind of seamlessly decide to do it like they seem to always. So you hit your E power chord. Give it a little groove to keep it kind of interesting. Then play your scale. Okay, and then go up a half step. Same thing. Now we're you know we're changing keys, so our shape just changes with us. Now, just for your own sake, pick things that you can consistently accomplish. Okay? Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get your imagination into territories that you know you're not. Your hands aren't able to reflex yet. That's not to say don't push it. You know, push yourself. You never know what you'll find. See, I just screwed up there, but I'm gonna keep going. sound musical, especially when you make mistakes. I mean, that's the whole point. Flow, baby. So on and so forth. Right on? Do the same thing from the A string. mistake. From A, do the same thing. From A, do the same thing. My G string is 
make something look such ass. That's why I just flat as shit. And then from the A string, do the same thing. so forth, right? Another way to practice this uh, is to just give yourself little shapes right on. Most songs are variations on the same chord progressions. The very popular chord progressions, oddly enough, make very visual shapes on the guitar. For example, a 1-4-5 kind of looks like a Tetris piece. This is an A. Now, if we were playing this in an open chord, we'd have A, D, E, okay? So that's like an L shape. You can do this anywhere on the neck, it's going to sound the same way. It's just going to be in a different key. And that's not to say you have to play it the exact same way every time. You can. Okay? A 1 4 5 from the A string is going to just be uh, the same Tetris shape but kind of in reverse. So if we were in uh, D rather than A, so when we were in A, our 1, 4, 5 looked like this. It was A, 4, D, 5, E. Well, let's change keys to D, and our 1, 4, 5 is going to look like this. Here's 1, D, 4. It's a diagonal down, and 5 is just below it. Chords, different voicing. Ah, my fault. Now you can make it the same shape as when we are playing it from the E string instead of putting the G down the octave, right on. And you can do the same thing. two shapes together that's been done a thousand times. One, two, one, two, three. Have a lot of fun with that. Now, with our double stops. Double stops is a way of playing our power chords, but not having to. 